Hi, everybody. I'm Dan Wells. I write horror, fantasy, and science fiction, and I talk about games on the internet. Today we are talking about Out of Time, which is an adventure supplement for Tales from the Loop. Tales from the Loop, uh, we talked about a while ago. It's a pretty famous Swedish RPG uh, that started from an art book, and it's been spun off. There's a, a TV series on Amazon Prime. Um, anyway, it's a famous thing. It's a big deal. It won a thousand awards, and uh, Out of Time is a campaign supplement for it. The game itself, Tales from the Loop, is about kids in a small town in Sweden, uh, in kind of an island in Sweden. And it takes place in the 80s. It has that nostalgia, Stranger Things kind of vibe to it. Uh, but rather than being a horror story, it is a science fiction story. It certainly can have elements of horror if that's what you want to do. And, you know, these images that you see around me, they're very indicative of the kind of game. Here's a little kid, <laughs> looks like he's maybe eight years old at the most, wearing a parka and a snow hat, looking at some enormous, weird science fictional device. And if you want to play a game about little kids who encounter science fictional devices and try to figure out what's going on with them and how to deal with them, this is the game for you. It does a great job. Tales from, or Out of Time, is an adventure supplement that includes three adventures that are connected and tell a time travel story. And it's really cool. It starts with, you know, the, the first adventure just starts with the basic hook of here are, you know, a cup, a handful of rumors about animals disappearing. Maybe one of the PC's pets has gone. Um, there's a, a farmer whose horse has disappeared. There's different things like that. And the kids are like, oh, we're going to figure this out. And they get on their bikes and they pedal around and they try to solve this mystery of where the animals are going. And then they start to encounter these strange phenomena and things go weird. And there's odd people in the town doing weird things. And uh, one of the really striking visuals is uh, there is a repeated event where every night over the water, this enormous magnetrine ship, which is like a hover ship, it appears and it crashes. And right before it crashes, it disappears again. And this is something that the kids see all the time. And they're like, what is going on? How does this relate to the animal disappearances? What's, you know, I don't understand. Anyway, that's the hook for it. Um, let's get into and show a couple of things. This might get a little spoilery, and I don't want it to. So, um, but but I uh, just want to show a couple things off. So anyway, very quickly, here's the basic map. Uh, the loop is a superconductor that's partially responsible for all of the funky stuff that happens. Um, and the art, of course, is incredible and, and evocative and gorgeous. So there is this whole flowchart, uh, this diagram of how the time travel works in this time travel adventure. And honestly, reading through this did not help me <laughs> at first to figure out what was going on or uh, what helped. Um, the rest of the stuff here where it talks about mystery one, mystery two, and then mystery three on the next page, that did help. Uh, and it goes into really detailed information right up front to help you as the game master understand the different timelines involved in the time travel adventure. Time travel is a very unique puzzle to get your head around for a role-playing game because you need to present things to the characters in chronological order, the order in which the characters experience them, even though different things are happening in different orders for other people. The NPCs uh, who might be jumping around in time, they are experiencing this differently. And so the kids might meet an older version before they meet a younger version and things like that. Um, really interesting and honestly very well done 
once you have read through it and you understand it, then you can go back and look at that diagram and say, oh, this makes sense to me now. So that's really great. Um, so the three sections are called the Animal Arc, Summer Camp, and Storm in the Hourglass. I am not going to go into any more detail on that because I don't want to risk um, exposing any spoilers to people. Just say, yes, this is great and you should do it. Um, what it's got here at the end is there's uh, three more chapters that are of much broader general use. Uh, so there's the three adventures you can go through, but then there's also a section on secret places and uh, you know different kinds of locations you could put into the game if you uh, wanted to. Um, every character, you know, every, every group of PCs has a hideaway where the, you know, the kids clubhouse or whatever, where they go and they hang out. Uh, and so there's that sort of thing. So this is full of ideas for that. It's full of adventure hooks and different ideas of things you could do with just cool places. Uh, there's this thing at the end called the mystery machine. And this is literally just an adventure generator that is really fascinating to uh, go through. I love, love these kinds of tables in games. I love the ability to say, oh, well, here's a chart. So I can roll a d6, I get a three, and I get a five. So that says nanorobots. So now I know the antagonist is nanorobots. And then I roll d66 here, and I got a 42, which says uh, they're trying to refute their opponents and survive. So someone's trying to destroy these nanorobots and they are uh, becoming antagonistic in their effort just to survive. The mystery's basic components? Well, let's roll twice on here. Let's get a 23 and let's get a 61. It says poisoned water and uh, 61 on the next page, ghostly manifestations. So then we start to think as the game master, well, I think I can understand how to get poisoned water from the nanobots. Maybe the nanobots are themselves the poison. They think it's some kind of a germ, but it's actually nanobots. And so when you get poisoned, then you're ingesting these bots and they're doing something. How are we gonna bring ghostly manifestations into this? Maybe those are um, hallucinations brought on by having the nanobots inside of you. Maybe they are holographic projections of some other thing. Um, maybe they are people who are displaced slightly, you know, phased out of reality. And so they look like ghosts. Lots of different you know, you can start turning all those wheels and trying to figure out how you're going to do this. Examples of involved organizations. Maybe, you know, we've got the military or the police who are uh, causing the problem or they're investigating the problem. And then different ways to introduce the mystery. This is great. Let's uh, check this out here. We've got a genre with uh, adventure and detective elements. And the introduction is... Uh, archaeologists discovery and then we have confrontation and we'll choose um, gratitude appreciation and there's descriptions of those throughout here so you can use them and I won't go through and use every single table in here but you can see there is a lot there is just so much in here uh, that you can really come up with fantastic adventures almost on the fly uh, roll up all these elements, figure out how you're going to connect them all to each other, how you're going to introduce the themes, and then let the kids run from there and do what they want. Um, Tales from the Loop is such an innovative and exciting role-playing game. It is unlike anything you've ever played, if you've never played it before. Um, and so this book is just an incredible purchase if you want to give Tales from the Loop a try and you've got you know, the core book or the starter set but you're not sure what to do, here's three pre-made adventures that you can pick up, read through, and run. And then this adventure generator that you can use over and over, endlessly replayable, really exciting stuff. Now, the final chapter here in the book is called The Mix CD of Mysteries, which is basically just um, different kinds of uh, uh, ideas based on music using a playlist and they've got a little playlist right up here um, and it just gives sample adventure hooks for mysteries that you could 
slot into your games or play in between other games or maybe you've got an idea and you just want to you know bulk it up uh, because these two maps are up here I should also mention the default setting of course is in small town in Sweden but the book is also designed for Americans who don't want to play in Sweden if you want to play in in the US here's uh, uh, a alternate setting in Arizona and throughout the book anytime you see anything in brackets with orange like there's one here uh, one day when the characters visit Satra or in Arizona Lake Mead Marina uh, broadcast from Stockholm or in America Las Vegas so there's a lot of different there's there's you know that is throughout here and it's very unobtrusive if you don't want it and it's very awesome if you do want it so anyway this book is fantastic. Um, I don't know if I'd go so far as to say it needs to be your first purchase after getting the core book, but I kind of want to say that anyway, just because that adventure generator is so valuable. But I also don't want to undersell the out of time, you know, three adventure arc. Those mysteries are really cool. It's hard to do a time travel adventure well, and they have done one very, very well. There's a lot of exciting stuff, there's good twists, and the time travel all holds together, which is impressive. So, anyway, thank you for watching the video. Uh, I, My name is Dan Wells. I am also an author, and you can read my books. Um, I am also a professional game master. You can hire me to run a game or a campaign for you, including, if you're interested, Tales from the Loop. So anyway, thanks for watching. You're awesome.